Good evening. Welcome to this special edition of the Glasov Gang. This evening we have our special Easter edition, and we're focusing on the persecution of Christians in the former Soviet Union, but also the persecution of all religious believers in the former Soviet Union and also continuing on today uh, in the Islamic world and under totalitarian regimes. Let us introduce our three guests. We have with us Kevin Gonzalez, a producer of an upcoming documentary, Martyred in the USSR. Leon Weinstein, who is the author of Capitalism 101, and he comes from the former Soviet Union with some warnings for us. And Boric Valeric, a Czech defector. Gentlemen, welcome to the Glasov Gang. Thanks for having me. Thank I was about to say canceled Czech. Yes. <laughs> it's a Czech defector or a canceled Czech? Uh, I became, uh, I started as a bounced Czech and then became cancelled Czech when they cancelled my Czechoslovakian citizenship. Okay, thank you very much. So we might just put cancelled Czech under your name for the show. <laughs> Gentlemen, each of us brings something here today to uh, many themes that we're going to discuss, but we want the foundation to be today uh, Kevin's documentary, which is coming up. Uh, it is the, about the persecution of Christians in the Soviet Union, but as you have also informed me, Kevin, you're going to include all religions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about this new documentary that's coming up and why you're doing it and what your plans are. So, yeah, we, we're looking for a topic, and uh, obviously this was probably not on our top ten picks, just we were looking for something local. And a girl in our church she and I were talking, we finally said, okay, what's your story? So you can know someone for a long time before you say, hey, where are you from? She goes, well, I'm from, I'm from Russia. I moved here when I was five. And so I said, well, how was practicing a faith there of any kind when you lived there? And she said it was horrible. And she, she had stories of her dad, who was a local pastor, that would, you'd hear knocks on the door at two o'clock in the morning, banging. And he would tell all of their siblings to go hide under the bed because the KGB was there to either take him in or question him. And so she said, you really need to interview my whole family because my grandfather's still alive. He's from the Stalin era. Uh, their stories are amazing. So packed up the gear, came to uh, Los Angeles because I'm from San Francisco. Uh, found their house, tore it apart, made it a studio and interviewed most of her family. And uh, from there, when I got their stories, uh, I said, I'd love other people, other religions. It would make a great documentary. Kevin, thank you so much because I think I can speak for the other two guests on certain levels that this all touches our heart in, in various uh, sacred places. Uh, my family was persecuted by uh, the Soviet regime and by the KGB for several reasons, including our Christianity. And so I would like to thank you for yeah. uh, doing this because, as we all know, there's a certain amnesia in our culture today where, the, where uh, I think the left <coughs> has... Uh, it controls the boundaries of our discourse to where these things are not discussed. Let's play a short clip of this upcoming documentary. The goal of the communist build society without God. И они забирали, арестовывали, расстреливали даже православных, расстреливали. И туда целожили заключенных шахматным порядком. The new generation of students in Russia are relatively ignorant of their own history. policy which was absolutely brutal. It was a policy of murder. It's normal life for Christian in former Soviet Union. Really, really powerful stuff. Kevin, thank you so much for making yeah. it. We're really looking forward to it, and we're going to get to when it might be coming out, etc., to sure. tell our viewers. Uh, Leon, uh, what do you add to this uh, in terms of being from the Soviet Union? Now, Kevin also is not going to just focus on Christians. It's going to be all religious believers as well. Right. It just yeah. at the moment it's focused on Pentecostals, right? Uh, a lot of it, too, yeah. is one of the biggest reasons is 
people still think the KGB or FSB is alive and well, even in the U.S. So when I ask certain people for interviews, they're scared to death to give them to me. Absolutely. So, Leon, I apologize there. Um, tell us what you bring to this and your perspective. And I think you were persecuted also for uh, being uh, a Jew in the Soviet Union. Uh, yes, but persecution of uh, religion or religious people mm -hmm. uh, has totally different basis. Okay. And since we're talking about religious religious persecution, let's let's uh, look at that. I believe that there are two reasons uh, for uh, a socialist government, a socialist country, to start prosecuting any religion. A is uh, because uh, socialism is a religion, and they're trying to uh, you know, kill all the competition. And number two is because when you strongly believe in God, believe in something, you are very hard to break. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to break you yeah. know, people. And, uh, you know, many of my friends or relatives of my friends were in camps and they're always saying that the people who were unbreakable were people who had faith. Mm -hmm. Those that were the, in gulags, the only people, yeah. or maybe almost only people, that were practically impossible to make them, uh, you know, uh, uh, run and tell to the, to, to, the, to the guards about someone who did mm -hmm. something, etc., yeah. etc. Et and, 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 you know, part of my study and fields of, of research throughout my life, I was also very interested in how totalitarian regimes hate private love between people because they want the worship. Right, and so whether it's belief in God, but also love between people in a couple, that the secular dictator wants all the worship and honor. You're right? touching Orwellian subjects yeah, right now. Yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. Yes. But 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 overall, yeah. what you're saying is the believers, and I, I believe that it's connected to love as well. They want all the adulation. Uh, right? After Stalin's era, it subsided, but before Stalin, during the beginning of the of the yeah. uh, Soviet era, and during Stalin, you were supposed to love. Uh, Soviet Union, communism, mm -hmm. uh, and the party, and Stalin much more than you love your own mother, father, or your yeah. God forbid wife. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the Warwick. play on that, actually, one of the guys, what they would do is they would tag the kids in the schools. Mm -hmm. So the teachers would say, what are your parents talking about? Yeah. So they would have the kids tell on their parents. Absolutely. And the ones that really wouldn't do that were the, the kids of faith. Yeah. They would pretty much just say no, they'd rather get beat up. <clears throat> Boric, you have been very nobly and stoically silent during these <laughs> expressions of wisdom. What do you contribute to this, sir? Well, uh, first of all, well, I can talk a little bit about uh, G-Control and this attempt to, dis uh, to dis uh, destroy Catholic Church in communist Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. Basically all the churches, but Catholic was the main one. And uh, about the control of the minds and hearts, I can add one very short story. Yeah. At school, you know, when I was little, we were taught about everything in Soviet Union was great. You know, our big brother, the great, the great, the greatest. And they uh, taught us about role models. Like, one of the role models was a little boy, his name was Pavel Morozov. Pavlik Morozov. Pavlik Morozov. It was our hero. Now, what happened, correct me if I'm wrong, when uh, Soviets, uh, the committees, you know, the Soviets, the, center, uh, the local committees started confiscating properties and land of peasants when the peasant was a little farmer, a little well-to-do well farmer, they called him Kulak. Right? Mm -hmm. So they went after these Kulaks and confiscated everything they had. And uh, Pavlik's daddy had a sled. And he hid that sled in the forest because he didn't want to get this sled confiscated. Pavel was indoctrinated enough that he betrayed his father and told the authorities about the hidden sled. So the authorities confiscated the sled and then other villagers got so scared that he can squeal on them that they were hiding something somewhere. They actually dragged him to the forest and killed him with axes. Is that correct? Yeah, this is how they yeah. This is <laughs> so this was yeah. how we were teach role models yeah. who's your hero. Right, and this is how totalitarian regimes also turn the people against each other by controlling them, mm -hmm. right? Thank you so much for that. Um, gentlemen, let's talk a little bit about this in terms of Kevin and making this documentary. 
uh, there is so much ignorance in our culture uh, today. Nobody even knows what the Cold War is. I remember when I was teaching in university, first year university students never heard of Stalin. Right. Uh, how, how can we fight totalitarianism today and fight Islamic totalitarianism or whatever enemy we face when we don't even know the battle that we waged before or even care about the victims? No, Kevin, the, can you talk a little bit about that? Why is what you're doing with this documentary almost not known in our culture, whereas I think it should be what everyone should be thinking about? Right. I was ignorant, too. So when I found out about it, I started talking to more people. And I actually started talking to people who are Russian. They didn't even know about it. The people who really knew about it were the actual ones who lived it. And there's, there's, I think there's two big reasons for this dearth of knowledge. Is, is one, it wasn't taught when it was going on in the Soviet Union, obviously they're not teaching it mm -hmm. to the kids. So you mean when you, here in the West? Yeah, in the West, yeah. no. One, the only people who really knew about it here in the, when it was after Stalin was Voice of America. Yeah, yeah. Well, the left doesn't want it, it to be known because exactly. then class hatred is demonized and they want class hatred well, to be accepted. Also, too, I don't think it was really known here because we were buddy-buddy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a different story. So we'll just kind of sweep things under the rug. Yeah. And so when you're not taught... You have a whole generation that grows up, and that generation grows up and becomes teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, that teacher is ignorant, too. So now when you have this younger generation that was never taught about what was going on, they grow up and become teachers. Their kids grow up and leave and spread out throughout yeah. parts of the world. Yes. That information isn't being spread by word of mouth because it's never been taught. It's dead. Absolutely. But, Kevin, what I want to <clears throat> stress as well is because the left owns our boundaries of discourse, they want to focus on waging war on capitalism. They don't want adversarial cultures to be seen in a negative light. When you said we were buddy-buddy during the Cold War, what did you mean by that? Well, no, more so like during Stalin's time. You mean, yeah. oh, you, oh, that there was an alliance against Hitler yeah. back at that, that time. I, yeah. yeah, but then that plays on why we don't have knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then a historical memory afterwards. Leon, what do you think about the historical amnesia? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we are very naive people. And I'm talking not about only Americans or Russians, whatever. We are, period, people. Uh, we believe in something very strange. In Russia, to give you an example, in Russia, for a couple of thousand years, they had a belief in the good czar. Uh, good czar meaning uh, they're sitting the father of the nation who called it a czar or monarch or chairman or whatever, you know, Fuhrer, and he, he's really father to the nation and he doesn't know what's going on. And if we will come to the capital and tell him and he will know the truth, he will punish the bad people who run in country mm -hmm. for him and everything will be okay. So Russians, peasants and you know, proletariat, they had this strange uh, idea of good czar, but Westerners, uh, not only peasants, but both classes, educated and not educated class, have a very strange idea, a very strange belief in the good government. <laughs> so government can be good. So uh, if we just will vote for this politician or that politician, everything will change, this party or that party, everything will be better. From this moment on, everything will be absolutely great. The bad people will be punished and our life will mm -hmm. be wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is total, how put it mildly, BS, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this thinking permeates Western culture, right? It's uh, Western culture yeah. since 200 years ago, no, since Thomas Pine wrote the yeah. common sense. And now we, you know, we, we turn our belief in from, from, oh, we need a king to, oh, we need a government. We do not need a government. Yeah. We need something totally different, but it's a discussion of a little bit longer than we have right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. But Leon, the problem is, too, is that the Obamas of the world and the left of the world think that if we just give a little bit to Putin, he'll give something back. But our enemies and totalitarian enemies see accommodation Wait a second. and... Com do you see difference between Obama and Putin? I don't. No, no absolutely. I, no, so wait. They, wait, they wait, talk, wait. Yeah. They talk as No, call, absolutely. But I ju I'm just referring to the leftist idealism that if we give a compromise, that they'll compromise too. But they actually have less respect for us when we compromise. Borg? Uh, I would like to interject one thing about this rift between reality and the beliefs. Uh, the cult of personality which Obama is building right now very successfully. Correct me if I'm wrong. When a revolution started eating its own children and communists starting killing communists, right? Right. Tukhachevsky and right. 
The communists went to the gallows, shouting, the Stalina, for Stalin. They didn't believe that Stalin would allow this. They believed that Stalin was betrayed mm -hmm. by, by apparatchiks, and if he only knew, he would have stopped it. Right. It's the way that the leftist believes till the dying day in the faith, right? They cannot accept reality, right? Yeah. Um, gentlemen, with the couple minutes that we have left, very briefly, uh, what is one way out of this in terms of this, this horrible historical amnesia and the way the left controls the culture? I think one way is to be making documentaries, getting the word out. But before we go, just a little bit on that, on how conservatives or those of us who care about human rights can try to break through this Berlin Wall that the left has built in the West. Kevin? A lot of it, I'm going to say, yeah, that's, for me, for what I do, because I'm a producer, I'm going to go to media. And getting that out there, when you find people who've lived it, that's, that's what a producer is going to do. We're going to go find people who've lived it. We're going to interview them, we're going to talk about them, we're going to use social things like Facebook and YouTube to actually take a testimony. Because the problem is, when I've actually talked to people about this, sometimes I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. Yeah. They're just simply not going to listen. Mm -hmm. But if I stick somebody's face like him, say, hey, guess what? Mm -hmm. This guy lived it. I'm not just yapping. Yeah. They'll listen. Yeah. Leon? Um, <clears throat> as I said, 200 years ago, we found a way how to live without kings. Uh, in my opinion, the only way out of our problem is to find a way to live without politicians. <laughs> And unfortunately, the mindset today is also looking at politicians as saviors. Uh, can I say the, something? Yeah, yeah. 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 The way that the 30 left... 30 seconds. Yeah. 400 years ago, 100% of the population of the world, including scientists, thought that the Earth is the center of the, Earth, of, of the world. And one person, Giordano Bruno, who said no, was, was tortured and killed. And uh, 400 years ago, please ask anywhere, uh, anyone in the hemisphere, in the Western Hemisphere, was the center of the world. They will tell, not the Earth. Right. So it is possible to change paradigms. So we need to change paradigms. Absolutely, Borg. The strongest Briefly weapon please. that I know is communicate, communicate, communicate. In communist Czechoslovakia, the most feared weapon wasn't a gun. It was a copy machine. That's why copy machine was not accessible to people. When you wanted to make copies, they would give you, let's say, 15 or 50 or 100 sheets of paper. So you would make the copies because they controlled the information. And copy gun can kill one guy. Copy machine can inform thousands. And that's the weapon. Communication, communication, communication. Some is that. Thank you very much, <laughs> gentlemen. And we will return for our second segment of the Glasov Gang, uh, where we will discuss if the Cold War ever really ended. See you then.